When I talk about good movies, I usually find myself wanting to cover something that's masterful in its form, something that deserves to be regarded by all as a classic of cinema, yet at the same time, be really obscure. Obscure in a way where even though it has the critical acclaim of a masterpiece, it isn't really on the same level of popularity as other films of its type or even time. So, I'll be talking about a movie from 1948 that is seen by many critics as one of the greatest movies ever made, yet almost no one knows about it. The Red Shoes is essentially about a love triangle within a ballet company. Don't you dare click off this video because it's a movie about ballet. Be accepting! Vicky is the company's new wonderkin dancer, Julian is a composer who's just got out of college, and Boris is the company's uh, impresario? Impresario. They all begin working together on a ballet adaptation of Hans Christian Andersen's The Red Shoes. And in the course of the production, Boris and Julian aggressively try to win Vicky. And this is where the main conflict kicks in for her. Should she be with Boris or should she be with Julian? Boris can guarantee that she has a long, successful dancing career where she'll be surrounded by charming and colorful co-workers and hundreds of adoring fans, while Julian can simply provide her with a loving and honest relationship while he works on his own art. If you're familiar with the original fairy tale, then you'll know that this story is not a direct adaptation. Instead, it's what I like to call an unofficial adaptation, where the film goes in its own directions, but still takes the themes and even plot points of the original story. So in the film, the theme is about Vicky's artistic passion for dancing, and how it consumes her. You get the sense that she would be happier with a quieter life with Julian, but her pure joy and obsession for her art compels her back to the company and to Boris. Why do you want to dance? Why do you want to live? I don't know exactly why, but uh, I must. That's my answer too. I don't exactly want to give away the ending, but I will say that Vicky ultimately finds herself in a position where the choice she has to make, the choice between a successful dancing career under Boris and a quiet life with Julian, really breaks her down. In that way, the red shoes, both the shoes in the actual story and the ballet in the film, serve the main function as representations and plot devices for the protagonist's obsession. The influence of this movie's story and theme can be seen and felt in many other subsequent films like Black Swan, Whiplash, Amadeus, and a little bit of The Aviator, actually. Let's talk about the filmmakers who made this. The directors were Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger. The two directed, wrote, and produced nine films before The Red Shoes under the, the name The Archers, and they were excellent excellent filmmakers. They were famous in their time because of the way they used technicolor, matte paintings, cinematography. They were highly regarded for their skill in making these fantastical settings and visuals come to life. And it's on full display in all of their work. Films like Black Narcissus, Matter of Life and Death, Tales of Hoffman. Red Shoes is no exception. The best sequence in this film is the first time they perform the Red Shoes, the ballet within the film that's based on the f You get it. You get it. It doesn't bound itself to realism in this sequence, it just completely immerses itself into the fantasy, and it looks beautiful. All the colors and visuals are striking. They're some of the best I've seen in any film. In addition to that, the Oscar-winning score is magical and highly immersive. It really does feel like you've been transported to another world. And even after the sequence ends and we return to the real world, the fantasy elements still unexpectedly appear, and it creates a finale which is poetic, tragic, and altogether haunting. Sadly, Powell and Pressburger aren't very well known today. One major reason is that Powell went on to direct a movie called Peeping Tom, today seen by many as the father of the slasher film genre, but back then people were disgusted by it. 
it, and it effectively ended Powell's career. I guess because of that, the Red Shoes kind of suffered a lack of attention from newer audiences. I swear to god, even film professors don't know this film exists. But luckily, great directors such as Martin Scorsese championed the film. And Scorsese actually helped it get restored, along with his longtime editor, Thelma Schoonma- I have no idea how to pronounce her surname. How is it pronounced? Schoonmaker, along with his longtime editor Thelma Schoonmaker, who was actually Powell's wife, believe it or not. I promise in the future to do better and to not bring up Scorsese again. <laughs> Oh my god, is this gonna be a thing with me? I really do hope that more and more people watch this film because it is a genuine cinema classic, and it deserves all the praise in the world. The acting is great, the story is one of the best unofficial adaptations I've ever seen, and everything in the technical department is straight up magical. Honestly, the main reason to watch this movie is to see the best film by two of the greatest unsung masters of cinema. So without further ado, Go watch it. Then maybe we can all be united in our love for ballet. Wait, what did I just say?